So let's move on. Since we already touched base on the majority parts of the Tree of Life and recognizing the Sephirot and the paths, and we can go on and on about the correspondences, the names, and all the things that you see in charts, but the, the question we want to ask here is, what is this Tree of Life? Where is this Tree of Life? Is it something just written in the pages of the Bible that says in the middle of the garden there was a Tree of Life? Where is it today? Where do we find it today? How do we use this? You know, we talk about this in Kabbalah all the time, that the secrets and the mysteries of the Kabbalah can unlock the powers for you to improve your life. I challenge it and I say, go ahead and do so. Why don't we unlock it now? Students of the mysteries, this should not be a secret to you. This should be as clear as looking through a window, very transparent to you, and it should be accessible to you. Names and images are all powers awaken and reawaken. Colors are forces. Now, now that we got that, now that we got a lot of our fundamentals, I go back to the question, what is the tree of life? Where is this tree of life? The answer is, it's you. When you look at this tree, it's like looking right into the mirror. It's an exact replica of yourself as uh, a copy of the greater macrocosmos inside of you. You are an exact duplicate of this higher, greater macrocosm that we can even somewhat perceive known as the greater universe. And it is impossible for anyone to invoke anything in the universe unless it is first invoked within yourself. One of the greatest hermetic principles. So, in other words, by having to touch base or get into a contact with a certain force or an energy or a vice or, or a personality within yourself, you automatically connect with the greater consciousness of what that makeup is in the universe itself. Are you not a reflection of that greater universe? Are you not this one small microcosm as, as the whole entire dynamics put into one small little jar <laughs> of the greater universe. Are you not all of this put together in one? So, friends, and brothers and sisters, there is no secret when you look at this chart that it, it is a reflection of yourself. You cannot say that the universe is completely within yourself because to deny that would already deny the fact of the hermetic secret lied within, laid within yourself showing that there is greatness already in you. The great Mercury that's about to arise, the summum bonum that will be unfolded and unraveled, and you will come into your adepthood and recognize that you are in him and he is in you. There is no part of you, not of the gods. Now, let's talk about some vices. The tree of life is also used to heal. That's right. The hand that heals has an opposite hand that hurts. In other words, what can be painful in, in one's life can be healed by its opposite. McGregor Mathers teaches that if any force that you invoke in the universe, you have to invoke the highest divine names connected therewith. Second to that is if you are to overcome any energy or any force on the tree of life, simply go to its counteracting opposite. You notice how there are counteracting opposite colors on the tree of life. That's clue number one, showing that that will help to neutralize or counteract those forces. For example, red is the opposite of green. Blue is the opposite of orange. Yellow is the opposite of purple, etc. When we plug our vices onto the tree of life, that gives us a little map and a little lead way of how to take those vices and transform them. Isn't that what this work is all about? Transforming the self, knowing the self, as it says in the Greek schools, man, know thyself, which leads you into the next step, which is from knowing into self-perfecting. Self-knowledge for self-mastery. Okay, so let's go ahead and name some vices. You know, we have plenty of them, right? Nobody here can say honestly that they don't have any vices because it's only the ill who needs the doctor. When we think about vices, what are vices exactly? What's the definition of a vice? A vice would be something that um, 
I guess, makes you do things that are contrary to your spiritual nature. Right. It works contra or it works against that which is good or which is in harmony within the persona. That's a, good, that's a great definition. So let's name some vices. So I'll, I'll start it off here. How about sloth? How about laziness? Can anyone think of something else? Anger. Anger. Pride. Pride. That's a great one, isn't it? Anger and pride. What else do we have out there? Uh, how about uh, addictions? Addictions, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Addictions. Okay, so where is that plugged in on the tree of life? That's the question. We already know our correspondences, just to recap that a little bit here. This is this part here that I'm pointing to from Gaborah and has said the blue and red sphere down represents the ego or the persona or the ruach, the personality, uh, what, the, uh, what, what Freudian referred to as the, uh, the, the parent. So uh, this is where we plug in most of those vices. Where would we find pride, for example? Would it be in Typhirid? Pride would be in Typhirid. So knowing that Typhirid, each one of these Sephiris are governed by a divine hierarchy you can call upon those hierarchy to help one to either transform that itself or you have to bring it to the next level up. You have to work it within its own sphere or you have to bring it to the next level up. Okay. Uh, if you also notice that Typhirid is ruled by what planet? The sun. It's ruled by the sun. What planet is the opposite of the sun? The moon. Right. So you can't have sun without the moon, can you? male without the female. What's the counteracting or balancing force of the, of the male? The is the female. In the case like this, we have sun and moon. So, according to Mather's theory, is that you would always invoke the opposite to help to remedy or to heal, putting the medicine to the alchemical experiment and making it whole once again. So, Frat Fratters and Soros and friends, we are talking about calling upon and working with Yasod. But you notice also that when you're going up the tree of life, you work through Yasod before you get up into Typhirid. So in other words, those virtues have to already be embedded within you as you're initiating and advancing through the grades before you reach into the grade of Typhirid. Okay, so what, are, what, other, what other advice did we talk about? Uh, anger. And anger, yes. Okay, so uh, describe what anger is. What kind of energy is that? Would you say it's a hot or cold energy? I'd say it's very hot. It's a very hot energy. Is it active or is it passive? Active. Okay. And so where can we locate, do you think, exactly, would that be on the Tree of Life? I would think it would be up on the severe pillar up in Gaborah. Okay. So you're attributing anger here in Gaborah. Very red, active, very masculine, and it's ruled by Mars, right? Now, if we want to take the opposite, we have two, two uh, places for that. We could take it to this side of the tree, which is on the, on the passive side, which is on Hesed, or we can take it to the opposite side here, which is a Netzach, which is a more feminine aspect or lesser aspect of Mars. So the key here is taking the opposite to help to heal that vice. We're just pointing at the vices now. We had one more vice out here, I think we were talking about. Uh, obsessions or... Obsessions. Okay, obsessions. What causes obsession, do you think? It's what causes obsession is when the mind of the person constantly focuses on a certain symbol that he nothing else exists other than that symbol. He will breathe for that symbol, he will live for that symbol, he will die for that symbol, he will he will he will steal, rob for that symbol. That's what that's what you call an obsession. It's when you are overwhelmed with the fascination of what you are obsessing in with that symbol. People can be symbols, habits can be symbols, places can be symbols, and when you become over infatuated with it, that's what, that's what draws in the ideas of obsession. So, when we're thinking of an obsession, it's a thought that has penetrated into an emotion. So it has now, it has embodied the emotions and it has taken form in your, in your emotions. Where, where can we classify where that might be? An obsession. What happens when you're obsessed with something? You're, you're desiring it. You're wanting it. You, you need it. It's, like, it's, like, it's an addiction, right? Mm -hmm. And if you don't have it, it makes you want it more. 
Well, that would be Netzach. a Netzach, which is the Sephira corresponded to desire, also to Venus. What do we know about Venus, guys? Aphrodite, Venus, the goddess of love, right? And when she looks upon the mirror, she becomes vain to herself. When mm -hmm. she recognizes the divine, she gives, she gives glory to it and lifts up the light. But Venus is looking in the mirror. That's one of the flaws. That's one of the mistakes. That's what creates, creates a, a vice. One of them is pride. And another one is obsession. She can be so obsessed with her beauty. It's hard for her to take her eyes off herself. So when we think about Venus or Netzach on this side, what would be the remedy? What would be the alchemist, the alchemist medicine that would help to remedy this vice? Algebra. Or how would... Okay. Netzach or Venus could be somewhat a little dreamy too, if you notice, because you're so you're so caught in the aesthetics. There's no aesthetics in Mars. Name a military guy out there who's vain about his looks. <laughs> there's, no, there's no aesthetics in Mars. That's the opposite force. That's one of the opposite force. And the second one is over here in Hod, which is on the opposite side of the tree as well. Hod is dealing with more Mercury. One is desire, and the other one is reason. So those are the two ways that we look at the tree of life and having to deal with the vices and using what we know in correspondences and having to, to perform healing upon ourselves and other people in the world.